fact that basically all flagship phones these days pack significantly more horsepower than the Nintendo Switch, and yet 99 times out of 100, the Switch is still a better device for gaming, leaves me wondering, why? Obviously, there aren't major AAA games being developed for mobile platforms, but I think one of the things preventing big third-party publishers like EA, Activision, and Take-Two from really diving deep into mobile is the controls. Or really, lack thereof. I'm fully aware that I'm not the first person to recognize this, as evidenced by the wealth of mobile game controller options, but for the most part, they can be really described as awkward and half-baked. There are several console gamepad imitations with a clip that holds the phone above it, and there are even clips sold separately that just attach your phone to an actual first-party console gamepad. But what the Switch has proven to us over the last four plus years is that the best way to develop a mobile controller is to really cut it in half and attach the halves to each side of the device on which the game is being played. There have always been major hurdles to developing and manufacturing the perfect phone controller, and some of those hurdles will probably never go away. But in the age of remote play and cloud-based streaming, the Backbone One has gotten closer than any product I've seen previously by developing more than just a controller. Welcome, welcome, welcome everyone. Welcome back to Legal Speak, a Cold North production. I'm The Law Morris, and this is the video essay series in which I get to talk about the games I've been playing and what I think of the medium as a whole. After getting my invitation to xCloud and getting remote play working reliably well on my PS5, I found myself gaming in a place that I never really have before. My phone. So, naturally, I needed a reliable controller to go with that new experience, so here are my thoughts on the things the Backbone One does well, the things that doesn't do so well, and my thoughts on opportunities for improvements in a Backbone Two. This being a controller review, it would only be appropriate to start with the hardware. The Backbone has the distinct feeling of being a top-tier third-party controller, that is to say that while it doesn't feel as premium and polished as a first-party controller like the DualSense or the Xbox Elite controllers, it certainly feels intentional and several steps above the Pelican and Mad Cats controllers of yesteryear, and honestly even a cut above most offerings from the likes of Hori and Hyperkin that we see on store shelves today. If I were to liken the Backbone's quality to one other third-party controller manufacturer, it would be 8-BitDo. Obviously not first-party, but in no way does it feel cheap. Build quality feels sturdy and substantial, but regrettably just a tiny bit on the light side. Face and menu buttons feel excellent, offering a satisfying clickiness that has yet to leave me wondering if the phone should have registered a press, and the click in on the analog sticks is the one place where, in a blindfolded test, I feel certain the backbone could stand up to the first party controllers. And at the bottom of the left and right handles, the Backbone sports a recessed headphone and lightning jack, respectively, offering audio and charging pass-through. Overall, the design of the controller feels very intentional, and the quality leaves little to be desired. But nothing is perfect, and that includes the Backbone one. Where the face buttons, menu buttons, and analog sticks offer excellent tactile feedback, the bumpers and D-pads are much mushier, and although serviceable, they are a noticeable downgrade from those face and menu buttons. But at least the bumpers and D-pad aren't the worst feeling buttons on the controller. That honor goes to the triggers. Both left and right triggers feel light and almost hollow, offering very little in the way of feedback, and leave me wondering if the controller would be an all-around better package had Backbone opted for clickier digital triggers with less travel more akin to the Nintendo Switch. I also know that this is extremely nitpicky, but the edges around the analog sticks begin to concave further away from the actual stick stem than more traditional analog sticks, like the one seen on the Switch Lite, which for whatever reason is a huge part of what separates the backbone from first party controllers with regard to quality, in my mind at least. And unfortunately, the backbone is made to hold an iPhone without a case, and there is essentially zero negotiation on that front. I even tested the controller with the first party Apple leather case, and in order to get the lightning connector into the port, I would have had to bend it to a degree with which I was honestly uncomfortable. But the hardware isn't all there is to review when it comes to the Backbone One. 
The way Backbone has really differentiated themselves is through software. Immediately upon opening the Backbone, the user is met with a nearly Apple-level simplistic instruction card, teaching them how to place their phone in the controller, then prompting them to download the Backbone app. The app feels as though the developers recognized that despite the wild popularity of mobile gaming in recent years, there is yet to be a single unifying hub for the mobile gaming experience. So naturally with the Backbone app, an attempt was made at filling that void by bringing all your games and game streaming services together into one launcher. Backbone has taken that launcher and integrated key features that anyone familiar with Xbox Live or PSN have come to expect from a gaming platform. Features like friends lists, party chat, and gaming communities are all centralized and accessible in Backbone's app. The app also manages game capturing utilizing iOS's baked-in screen recording feature. Overall, no matter how impressive the hardware is, the real potential in Backbone lies in the software and how they've poised themselves to become the de facto platform for mobile gaming. Obviously, there are opportunities with the hardware that can be addressed in the Backbone too figure out how to improve upon the buttons under the bumpers and the D-pad, and just throw the analog triggers in the trash and switch us over to digital click triggers with less travel. I understand that those will have significantly less travel and are less luxurious, but simple and good is better than complicated and bad. I know it will be extremely difficult to design, and there is no way to possibly accommodate all iPhone cases but leaving more room in the phone cradle, then including a variety of sizes of stick-on rubber pads and some instructions on how to properly fit your phone in its case into the backbone and which pads to use would go a long way in making me use the controller more often. And I can't believe I'm having to say this in 2021, but if you're going to offer a headphone jack, which you should, that was really cool, it absolutely must be flush with the surface on which it's mounted. But the more interesting, and I think the more fruitful opportunities for Backbone to capitalize on, are in the software. As it is now, anyone can download the Backbone app, but they need an actual Backbone controller to license it the first time to get the software to work. Which means that in order to license this killer software, people have to either borrow a Backbone controller from a friend who has one, or spend $100 on one themselves. Granted, they'll be getting a pretty good controller, but the software alone offers so much potential that won't be reached if everyone is required to plug their phone into a Backbone controller to use. So here's what the Backbone 2 needs to include. One, a download code of some sort, or a way to download the app for free in the box. Then sell the app for $5 or even $10 and allow any third-party controller to be compatible. This will allow for growth of the Backbone Gaming Network, which will get the Backbone app on far more phones for gaming purposes, inherently giving Backbone more leverage for integration partnerships with game developers. By prioritizing the app, Backbone could potentially become that de facto mobile gaming platform and then monetize at a later date. Also, please develop a USB-C version of the Backbone 2 and sell both for $80. The Backbone controller is the first phone controller that I've ever thoroughly enjoyed. It solves the problem of weight distribution introduced by using a controller clip and offers high quality hardware for gaming on the go. Excellent software pushes the entire experience of using the Backbone over the top and makes it something that will absolutely live in my everyday carry bag after the world gets back to normal. If you're really into gaming on the phone, the Backbone one is an absolute must that definitely gets my recommendation. If you're not as into mobile gaming, then it might be a bit expensive for what it has to offer. Which mobile game controller do you use? And do you even like it? Let me know in the comments down below. Don't forget you can see everything I do all in one spot over at coldnorthpro.com. I'll be back next time talking about something else entirely. So until then, just go play some games.